say something, you say no. Come back and it's time for us to talk post COVID-19 uh, reopening the aviation sector or industry uh, as we await the reopening of um, the Nigerian airspace on the 21st of June. Uh, there are some after the, like three months of shutdown, uh, some people are very apprehensive as to how uh, the guidelines given by the uh, NCAA and NCDC uh, will shape the future of aviation sector in Nigeria and indeed in the world. But joining us now for this conversation, uh, post COVID-19 and reopening the aviation industry, we have joining us now, uh, Air Commodore Idongesit uh, Nkanga, retired. Air Commodore Idongesit Nkanga. Uh, he is a national chairman, Pan Niger Delta Forum, that's PANDEV. Air Commodore, thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you, thank you. Uh, he's joining us on the phone. All right, um, we know that NCAA has highlighted some guidelines, about 20 of them. Uh, I want to know the realities of these guidelines that must be followed by operators, uh, some of which include flight crew wearing personal protective equipment and observing infection prevention and control measures for the duration of the flight, undergoing mandatory testing for COVID-19 every 14 days, amongst other protocols. And this is at the cost of operators. Uh, what are the realities? Hello? Air Commodore? Yeah, I, I, lost, I lost the question. Yeah, I lost it. All right, the NCAA highlighted some guidelines, about 20 of them yeah. that must be followed uh, by operators. Yeah before June 21, the expected date of a Nigerian airspace, re airspace reopening. I want to know yeah. uh, the realities of this happening, knowing that um, the cost is on the operators. Can you hear me, Hello. please? Yeah, then it's just the last part of your sentence, but I know I, know I headed it up to the reality, the reality of uh, the, the, the operation. Yes, please. I, I, I didn't get the last part of that sentence, but I, if, if I can maybe uh, guess what you may have uh, wanted to, to find out. Yes, with the guidelines uh, from uh, NCAA, who is the regulatory body, as we've gotten those ones, and you, you know that what is happening now is, uh, is something that is new. The, the, this COVID-19 is something that is new. And uh, there are certain, some of those issues that as we try to do them, they have to give the maximum so far. And then when we start doing them, when we start implementing them, there might be a reason to adjust, depending on how necessary it is and all that. But I think at the moment, at the moment, it's not just the airline itself, because by the time you get to the airline, um, uh, to the aircraft itself, you would have at least uh, taken care of some of the things that they had asked for. But the airport itself that you are leaving, uh, we would, have, of course, for us in Aquaibo, uh, we have both the airline and the airport. Uh, those guidelines are the ones that will make the airports to for them to open the airport. And the issue of the 21st, I actually said not too long ago that 21st is not actually the day they want to start flights, but by that the time that Ministry of Aviation would have confirmed to them that we are that the aviation is ready to start. So it meant I'm not sure if it will be exactly on 21st because they are still inspecting some of those airports that could be ready to, to operate. But I believe that with the things on ground, by the time you even get into the aircraft itself, uh, the passenger will have been almost uh, will have been almost certain that the passenger is uh, COVID-19 safe in order to do that. Mm. Richard Komodo uh, Nkanga, uh, help us understand also too, um, I've seen a number of reports, um, not just by the World Travel Organization, but about a number of um, bodies in the African continent talking about expected losses uh, following the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and then the restriction of movement which has affected the aviation sector. What, what are your thoughts on calls for 
airlines, local airlines, to receive some compensation or some, you know, money so that they can get back to business. Because um, in normal times, they already found it difficult to run. How much more now running during COVID-19? What are your thoughts on this one? Well, the, uh, actually, actually, there's a sector that has lost so much because of this COVID-19 is uh, aviation. We've lost a, a lot because uh, it has to do with uh, tourism. Nobody, nobody's uh, undertaking tourism. Even commerce, movement, so many things has been very badly affected. We were told that there might be an opportunity uh, for us to uh, get some, not necessarily... Uh, I haven't heard the word compensation yet, but uh, it, it was more like a bailout thing which uh, you can draw from and then uh, be able to maybe pay back and all that so that the industry can get up. And the, the reality is that uh, some of the uh, airlines may not be able to come back. Even in Europe, we are, we've heard some that have already gone under uh, because uh, you, the passengers that you carry, that is the source of your, your revenue you know, to even pay salaries and stuff. Perhaps cargo flights might uh, not have been as badly affected as passenger carrying flights. Uh, so on that basis, it's going to be very difficult for the airlines. But a, a sort of bailout from governments and agencies uh, might, might, might really help. But if there's compensation, of course, it will be very welcomed. I can see at the moment uh, that we, we come in and uh, if, you don't, if we don't start, uh, in fact, even when you start, I'm aware, and I know some people are going to be very apprehensive. You know, should they travel, should they not travel? There are people are being advised, if you don't have to, don't travel. So that also makes it difficult, uh, makes it difficult for us. And even what is required, the social distancing and all those things, it will be difficult to break even. But I think we, we shall overcome, because... Uh, if uh, in, 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 when this pandemic, a, a similar pandemic occurred in 1918, uh, that was barely 16 years after aviation even came into in, into being. Uh, people had several reservations, and we were able to overcome, and aviation still boomed after that. I don't see why this one will not. It's just a matter of time. We, I think we will overcome. And uh, I, I think the measures that have been put in place are quite in order in order to give some kind of encouragement and confidence for the passengers that are going with us and all that, because I don't think we like to put anybody in harm's way. Now, if June 21 will be a reality, then uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it will be post-COVID-19 because we are still really in this COVID-19 era. But the reason for my first question to you, I want to know if uh, with these guidelines given by the NCAA, and the extra costs is going to cost for airlines, wouldn't this translate to extra cost or an increase in air flight or air tickets for passengers? Well, it's, 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 it's definitely going to be extra cost, but I don't think it's going to be transferred to the passengers immediately. Remember that the airlines need to also encourage passengers to come. So if you transfer all that to the passengers, you might... Uh, you might have problem, and that's why I was saying maybe if, if there is some way that uh, government and agencies could help, you know, so that we can come up, then that that uh, cost, extra cost, could be borne, you know, uh, sharing is sharing the the expenses, the, the operators and the passengers and all that, but not necessarily transferring everything to the passengers. Our worry is uh, if you don't take full load. Uh, because if you are doing social distancing inside the aircraft, I don't know what the final thing will be. If you are doing that, uh, it, it might be difficult uh, because if you don't carry full load and you are still, or if you don't carry in, um, a certain level of uh, uh, load and you are still taking the keeping low price, uh, it will be difficult to break even. Uh, so we'll, we'll be able, we'll manage it. It's, it's just a matter of sharing the inconveniences, just like you shared again. It will be wrong for one person to learn, one uh, one uh, uh, set to say, okay, yeah, we, we transfer the, the problems to the other. You definitely can transfer them to the passengers. They won't be able to bear it. It will be between the operators, 
government that, of course, because it translates to the economy of the government. Also, you can't do without air travels. It won't help your economy. And also the passengers understanding that uh, things are not exactly the way it used to be. Uh, but we'll, the one thing that we cannot compromise is uh, we won't like to put any passenger in harm's way. And this, this is a very uncertain time. So, I mean, people having a migraine just to imagine how they're going to come out of these countries whose entire livelihood and sustenance depends on the aviation tourism. I mean, it's tough for many people. But you, you, you've been here for, there for several years, and um, you can cross and compare notes with how it's been in previous times. But Kritale Komodo Nkanga, tell us what you think in terms of recovery for the aviation sector. One, and how people in the sector are going through through the value chain for the aviation sector and how soon you think um, recovery can happen, uh, some are saying sometime middle of next year or last quarter of next year. Hello? Uh, all right, Vitaat Kwada and Kanga, are you there? Uh, yes, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get. All right, so I was saying how, how soon do you think recovery can happen? Um, I've had um, accounts from several people in the aviation sector about the horrid times they've had to go through. Some are saying uh, by middle of next year, others are less optimistic. They're pointing uh, sometime first quarter of even 2022. How, how optimistic are you? Well, I, 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 I believe uh, it's, the line is not very clear. I believe you are talking about the recovery time, right. you know, from what we are going through now. Right. Uh, because things are very unpredictable. Uh, it's difficult to say. I think for now, what my, my our best bet is to learn to live with it. And as uh, as uh, recovery as uh, uh, solutions start coming to the to the uh, virus itself, because uh, right now, to the best of my knowledge, they've not even uh, discovered the cure for it. As long as the cure is not, it's going to be difficult to say how long. Uh, this will take. So the best thing is let us learn how to live with it, uh, which will be the worst case scenario. And as things get better, then we can always, uh, the things can always be, be eased out uh, for people. Uh, today, because we have some of those things, the sanitation, the, some of the things that they ask us to do, the social distancing and all that, let us try to be on the cautious side, you know, to minimize the spread. When eventually maybe they discover the vaccine or the cure or whatever, of course, all the better. But for now, since they've not discovered all that, it will be difficult for, for anybody to predict when this will end. Uh, we just have to live on the cautious side uh, because we can't leave the economy completely locked anywhere. And uh, we cannot uh, sit down and say until it is, we find a solution to it, we cannot continue. So we have to live as it is now and just be on the cautious side. Uh, but I believe. All things being equal, uh, by let's say not by next year, uh, things should get better. My prayer is that within this year, the vaccine or that least a cure uh, might might be you know in on the on the horizon. And then if that happens, I believe by next year we should be back and and happy again. All right, a lot of questions to ask, but uh, we are out of time. But thank you so much, uh, Komardo Idongesi Nkanga, retired, uh, the national chairman, Pan Niger Delta Forum, Pandav. Thank you so much for being with us on this program. We look forward to having you again uh, when the aviation sector reopens in Nigeria. Thank you very much. I appreciate you for the time you've given me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We take another break, and when we come back, we have more discussions. Please stay with us. Say something, you say no.